Good morning. Music's, the music's done, so that's my cue. Let's get started. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church Contemporary Praise Service, featuring the vocal arrangements of Our Savior's Praise Team under the direction of Ryan Hanson, Tom Cockett on the keyboards this morning. I'm Pastor Chris Hill, the senior pastor here at Our Savior's, and on behalf of the entire congregation, the rest of the ministry leadership, it is my honor to welcome you here in this space this morning for this year's journey to the cross and resurrection of Jesus. The cross always looms over our sanctuary, perhaps so much so that we fail to notice its presence. But Lent, Lent reminds us that we are called to be aware that our faith path runs along its form. This is the first Sunday of the church season that is called Lent, a time that brings the cross into a fuller focus. It's here to remind us this week of Jesus' real purpose. In the next six weeks, we'll refrain from hallelujahs, a further reminder of the power of the cross and the journey of salvation that Jesus took for us. Our Jesus story today will find us listening to the first real challenges to Jesus' true faith path, and those come from the devil himself. If you're here this morning in person, or you're watching on Cat 7 or on Facebook um, or on YouTube, or you have been walking, you're here in person and you're new, or you've been walking these halls for your entire life, it is very good to be with you in this time on these steps along this faith path this morning. Feel free to contact me or the rest of the ministry staff. You can do so in person. Call us at 879-1535. Use email. Use the little brown get-to-know-your-neighbor books this morning or any time during the service. You can use that little, um, that little prayer card that's in the bulletin, that, uh, the contact request card to let us know of your ministry needs. We begin our shared portion of this Lenten faith path this morning with songs that invite us to understand how our lives are rooted in Christ.
before the Lord in confession, we're being reminded of God's love and forgiveness for us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, to anoint us, to make us new. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy. God at the margins, we have wandered far from your home again and again. We lose our way. We turn inward, afraid of the world around us. We forget that you saved your people before and promise to do so again. Do not remember the deeds of our past, but turn our faces toward the future, where your forgiveness is sure, your welcome is clear, and your love overflows. Amen. Like a, can, a hen who gathers her chicks, God embraces you in tender care. Like manna in the desert, God feeds you with surprising mercy. Like a loving parent, God runs to meet you again this day, forgiving your sins for the sake of Christ, leading you from death into life. Amen. Pray with me. O oh Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Today's psalm is Psalm 91, verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 16. Please read responsibly. The assembly's portion is in bold print. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. You will tread upon the lion club and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Today's reading is from Romans chapter 10, verses 8b through 13. Paul reminds the Christians at Rome of the foundation of their creed, the confession of faith in the risen Christ as Lord. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For for one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Would you rise together with me as we prepare to hear this morning's gospel story? Well, the first Sunday in Lent, the gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. The story so far, we've heard of earlier in the year of the baptism of Jesus, where as he comes up out of the water, heavens are opened, and a voice from heaven proclaims him to be God's beloved Son, with whom God is well pleased. The story picks up right after that event. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on his hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And the devil had Every test he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. 
I could get the youngest among us to come on up for this morning's children's sermon. Let's sit in the front pew, I think, because I need your help with a little project. So if you could sit right there, and then I need this box to be right there. Unlock it so that it opens. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Have a, have a seat there. Now, this is the first Sunday in Lent, and Lent is, a, is an old word that means spring. So today's the first day of spring. No, it kind of doesn't much look like it. Although we did set our clocks ahead today. Since you're here, you must have remembered to do that. And that's a springtime thing. So there's hope. There's something coming that is, that is springtime. And one of those things that's part of springtime is Easter. Now, that's 40 days from now. So, but in, in, in the season of Lent, one of the things we do in church is, I have a few here last week, I talked about taking some time and being a little more careful about listening. And one of the things we do during Lent in church is listen a little more carefully about stuff that has to do with Jesus dying on the cross. Being reminded that he loved us so much that he opened up his arms and died on the cross for us. And we think about that, and we listen to things and some of the stories about Jesus as he's getting ready for that, like we're getting ready for spring and getting ready for Easter. But one of the ways that we get ready for that and, and listen a little more carefully is to stop saying hallelujah. Hallelujah is an old and ancient word that means praise the Lord. And if you know, some, some of you are, have, have heard me talk about this before, how God says that God's name is Yahweh, and how it's designed to be breathed. Yahweh. Well, the Yah of Yahweh is the same Yah that's of hallelujah. Now during Lent, we, we stop saying praise the Lord using hallelujah. We praise the Lord in other ways, but we stop saying hallelujah because hallelujah is kind of a really fun and, and, a, and a full of energy and, and it's a sort of a really joyful way to say praise the Lord. And, but during Lent, we want to stop a little and we want to listen a little more and we want to think a little more in our hearts and minds about Jesus dying on the cross. So one way we do that in church is to stop saying hallelujah. And I have that word all spelled out in big letters, and I'm going to give you those letters because I need your help to put them away. So I'm going to give you, that's the L, and that's the E, and that's another L, and there's a U, and i got a couple more extras, so I'm going to hand those. I'm, I'm going to need your help with all right, then that's the Y, and that's the A, and the exclamation point is just for the fun of it, because that's that, that doesn't really, it's not really in the, in the Bible. So, but, so we're going to put the hallelujah away for 40 days and not use it in church to, to think about, we're, instead we're going to think about leaving it out so we can think about the cross and listen to the stories about the cross. So first service I had, I had the, 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 the students, the kids help me put away Alleluia, which is very similar, but it's the same thing. So if you would put the letters in this box, we'll put them in there, and we'll lock it up and put it somewhere safe, and then get them out on Easter, which is a really most excellent time to use this word to praise God. But we'll use other ways to praise God during Lent. We'll put the Hallelujah safely in this box, and, and I'll lock the key in there what do you want give me the y all right and the a and the exclamation point just for the fun of it and i'll put it in the box all right and then i'll lock it up there now it's safe and ready for us to use at easter so would you pray with me thank you god for giving us another way to think about your cross. Help us do that all during Lent. Protect our hallelujah until Easter. Amen. Thanks for coming up. And I'll put this place somewhere, this somewhere safe someplace safe.
I've been talking to the powers that be about uh, taking more pews out of the place <coughs> so that I don't have to, so that you have to come closer to me as opposed to me always coming up to, to you because it really it really messes up the, the camera angle for me to move closer to yeah, we're still it's probably not going to happen but it's just an idea it's just an idea it's an idea like what I did decided to give up for Lent how many of you gave something up for Lent? You don't have to tell me what it is, but sh show of hands, did you give something up for Lent? Did you think about giving something up for Lent? Did you ignore the whole thing completely? All right, well, that happens. I gave up, I gave up chocolate for Lent. Let me talk a little bit about that. Now, so Lent started actually Wednesday with, with Ash Wednesday, and uh, our children, youth, and family director, Jess, was was uh, preparing for a, she was gone for, got gone for a couple of days, so I got to lead the middle school, uh, the middle school kids in, in devotions on Ash Wednesday. And I shared, shared with them that Lent was here, it was Ash Wednesday, and one of the things you can do is to give up something for Lent. And then I said, I had decided to give up chocolate. And one of the kids said, why? Well, that's a good question. And well, my answer was, well, it's a fast. And they said it was quick. Oh, no, so what's that? So I, I went to the dictionary after, after devotions, and I, I answered something. But anyway, I went to, went to my office, and, and my, my Webster dictionary, it, how many of you know what a dictionary is? Just, <laughs> my Webster dictionary is, has, I, is falling completely apart, so I... I had to turn to the New American Heritage Collegiate Dictionary, which actually does a pretty good job. It's not Webster's, but it still does a good job. I also Googled it. How many of you know how to Google things? Just, okay, so I did that too. So the word fast um, is this really, really cool, it's a really cool word. It starts from an old, old English word. You got fist, I think. And, and that, that, that word means solid. It's kind of like a, you know, like a, you know the, you've heard of a, like a fastener? That's something like a, you know, like a, a lock. You put it together and it fastens it. Or, you know, you put a, a bracket on something and it fastens it to it. So, so it's the same word. Something that connects something together. Fastener is the same, same root as the word fast. But it's also connected, the German and the Norse, it's a, there's a Scandinavian word that's all, almost the same that also means to give something up, to, to ex, especially to not eat something, to, 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 to refrain from eating or, or give up something. So how many of you have, have, uh, have, didn't eat last night while you were asleep? Now, some, also a couple of you uh, got up in the morning and slept, slept, walked to the refrigerator. Okay. But the rest of us fasted last night. And if you got up this morning and had a meal, some of you, I'm still waiting for mine, you broke your fast, your evening, nighttime fast. You had breakfast. Break fast. See where that comes from? So you didn't eat all night long, so you... We're fasting. So there's, but there's this connection between solid, firm, connected, and this giving up food. Webster online, this is what happens when, when I googled this. Um, firmly fixed. It's like, it's tightly, tightly shut. It's ad adhering firmly. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's firmly loyal. Like you become fast friends with somebody. All right? And then the verb, the action, is then to abstain from food, to eat sparingly or abstain from some foods. So here's, here's the definition of fast that I came up with then. Fasting is abstaining from food or something else with the intent to connect you more completely to an important reality. More simply, it's doing something, it's, it's stopping, to, it's, it's not doing something so that you connect with Jesus better. Does that make sense? So a fast is stopping something, leaving, taking, uh, leaving something out of your life so you can connect, you can fasten 
to Jesus a little better. A fast is a fastening between us and God. So well, the question remains, back, it comes back around to middle school youth group, why did you do that? <laughs> why are you doing it now? What's, what's, the whole, what's the point of this? I mean, and some of you, pick, you know, give up something for Lent as a way to diet, you know, maybe to lose a few pounds, maybe to be a little nicer to the neighbors, you know, I've stopped throwing rocks at the neighbor's dog, you know, those kind, you may, may kind of to make you a better person or something, that's, that's going on, but why do you do that for Lent? That's a good question. It's tied to what Jesus did, you may guess. Jesus, primed and pumped by the Holy Spirit, twice in the lesson, He's full of the Holy Spirit, and then he's led by the Holy Spirit. He's just been dumped on by the Holy Spirit in bodily form. The, uh, like a dove comes down, lands on Jesus, and the voice says, You're my son, my beloved, I'm pleased with you, pumped up by the Holy Spirit. Jesus goes out in the wilderness, into the empty spaces, out of, away from the crowds of the Jordan River where John is baptizing, away from everybody, away from everything, and he doesn't eat. He doesn't eat for 40 days. That's a long time. The Bible doesn't say if he, if he doesn't drink, but some of, the, some of the images and some of the legends about it say that he doesn't, but the Bible itself just says he doesn't eat for 40 days. He goes out to fast for 40 days before he begins his ministry before he starts healing, before he starts teaching, before he starts walking on water, before he does anything at all that impacts the world around him, before he starts confronting the religious and political leaders of his time, he fasts for 40 days. So we come back to the question, why does he do that? Why would he do that? Indeed, good question. And in Jesus' case, that experience of fasting is laced, woven, knitted together, fastened with temptation. Matthew, when he tells this story, says that that's why Jesus went out there. That's why the Spirit chased him out into the wilderness, so that he could encounter the devil, so that he and the devil could be involved in a crazy relationship where the devil's trying to get him to do something wrong, to be tempted, to be tested by the devil. And it kind of makes me wonder if that's why Jesus includes lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil in his master prayer. And think about it. Part of one of his prime human experiences is to run smack up against temptation so he knows, he knows we need help. He knows we need to make a connection to get through that. So why would the Spirit lead Jesus to do that? Why would we mimic that during this season leading to the cross and to the resurrection, to Easter? Well, if you look at the specifics of the tests, the temptations, that diablo, that's where we get diabolical, it's the Greek word for devil, diablos, or Satan, the, the Hebrew is Satan, Satan, the accuser tries, if you look at how that entity tries to convince Jesus to react, and it is, it is strictly reaction. You can do this. You can do this, so please do it. If you are the Son of God. Jesus has just heard from heaven, from God in God's glory, dove flapping on his head, you're my son, you're the Son of God. If or since you are the Son of God, a reason starts to emerge if you, if you look at what the devil's doing here. Maybe the reason Jesus had to start, prime his ministry, set his ministry, connect his ministry to this temptation reality, maybe it was to make sure that everyone knows, everyone knows, that the son, what it meant to be the son of God. Maybe it was to connect in Jesus' identity for us and for him and for the devil and for everyone else just what it means to be the son of God. Maybe it was to be sure that everyone knows that what it meant for Jesus to be the son of God in order for him to do anything else 
to heal, to teach, to do miracles, to, to, to bring justice to the world. Maybe what it meant to be just the Son of God is to be fully connected, fully fastened to every human temptation, to every human test. Maybe those 40 days of fasting were spirit-led so that the world and the devil and we know that to be the Son of God, to be the power of God in the world, means Jesus encounters the darkest nights of the human experience. He's fastened to those. He's connected to those. Maybe it's all about that connection, that Christ is God, is human, totally and completely. Jesus fast. Jesus encounters the full gamut of human temptation. Then he begins his ministry of fastening that word that is near to us, that is upon our hearts and upon our lips, that Paul was talking about that, that talking about this morning. Then he can fasten that to our hearts, that word. He can be that word that fastens to us only because he's fastened to the temptations himself. So why did I give up chocolate for 40 days? Well, what I told the middle schoolers was that I did that so that every time I want to eat chocolate, I'll think about Jesus. So... After, I mentioned this at, at first service, of course, a similar sermon. A couple of the folks, a couple of you in this room this morning, made sure to uh, point out to me where the chocolate was available in the building during coffee. Somebody was snacking on some earlier, and her sister said, oh, by the way, every time I want to eat chocolate, I told the middle schoolers, I'll think of Jesus. I'll notice the tiny sacrifice of skipping the ecstatic delight of melt-in-your-mouth heavenly goodness. I can pause and remember how much more profound Jesus' sacrifice is. It's such a small thing, chocolate, but it reminds me of the biggest sacrifice of the, in the universe. Jesus' sacrifice for me and when I remember that, I can pray a prayer of thanks and a prayer of fastening and a prayer of connection to that truth. When I notice that I'm not spending any money on candy, maybe I can redirect those resources to, to help someone eat a balanced meal and say a prayer for guidance with that. On Ash Wednesday, um, Pastor Karen, in her sermon for the, for the service on that night, shared a great list from the Reverend David Leininger of a few more practical and directly effective fasts that we could embrace. And she shared that with you. And if you want to make, make a copy of that list, I, I have it here. But there's, here's, here's kind of some of the highlights. Give up grumbling about anything, really, and instead give thanks. Maybe a little more effective than chocolate. Give up 10 or 15 minutes in bed at either end of your day, filled instead with prayer or Bible study or conversation with family or friends. Give up looking at the bad in people and instead notice the good. Just like Luther when he talks about the, the Ten Commandments and about not bearing false witness, he makes that same connection. Always look at the good in people. Instead, see the good instead of pointing out and looking at the bad. Give up unkind speech. Instead, be generous. Always speak well of them is how Luther talks about it. Give up unkind speech. Instead, think about the best. Give up hatred choose love instead give up worries and uh, worries about yourself and instead focus on somebody who's lonely that you know might need some kind of a 
some kind of a visit or a contact from you. There was a couple more. Um, give up buying anything but essentials for yourself and give the money to, to somebody that needs help or to a, a helping ministry. Give up judging by appearances and by the standards of the world and instead learn to give yourself to God. Those are a little more practical. But um, I gave up chocolate. Which isn't to say that I couldn't do some of these. And if you've given up something else, it's to say you could maybe embrace some of these as well. Maybe you are abstaining from something in your life, too. Maybe you're going to do something more. Maybe you're going to abstain from sitting on the couch and exercise instead. Jesus fasted for 40 days and was tested by the devil. So, you giving up something, me giving up something, Jesus being tempted for 40 days, fasting for 40 days, one of the things that can happen for us and because of both of those is a deeper awareness of our connection, our fastening to Jesus and how Jesus fastens the Word of God into our hearts and upon our lips and into our lives. Maybe that connection, awareness, can make it more clear to us that Jesus is the rock we can trust fearlessly. That Jesus is the one who is our refuge, who raises us up. Maybe fast, fasting in these 40 days can make us more vibrantly aware of our fastening, our connection to Jesus and the cross's connection to us. We heard about this promise in the psalm. Now we get to sing it. Thank you. 
Would you rise together with me to claim that faith, to claim that fastening, to claim that connection? We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Share that peace with one another. Huge crowd here this morning. We're going to need to take the offering. Yeah, I'll start doing that really quick here. So, anyway, a few things about our ministry together that I want to share with you this morning. Thank you for your offering, your offering of your of your treasure, a little bit of what God has entrusted to you this morning. Thank you for that, and your time and your talents and being here this morning and setting your clocks forward and getting making sure that was there and you know digging out from the snowbank to get here. Um, it all matters. It all makes a difference to the work and ministry of the church that we do together here. Um, another thing that can, uh, that can make a difference, too, is helping to serve soup during um, the Lenten Wednesday night experiences. The sign-up sheet for that is in the entryway this morning. There should also be a salesperson or two out there for getting your tickets to the pasta for preschool, the uh, spaghetti dinner for our uh, fundraiser for our, our, our preschool. So we'll watch for that in the entryway there this morning. Also, in the entryway this morning, there should be a couple of volunteers out there to help you get connected with our new directory. The new um, pictorial directory is being put together. Um, it's going to be an electronically based um, publication. But we'll be making, uh, for those of who need it and, and want it, a printed version of that. But to get you started with that and get you connected with that and help you um, set up your, your, your entry into that and, and, and uh, get, get you down the road towards getting your picture involved in that, there will be volunteers. Marty, you're going to be out there this, this morning to help with that process. So look for Marty and, uh, and talk to him. And, uh, and there, Keith, I don't know if you're helping with that this morning or... Maybe. Anyway, there'll be, uh, there'll be uh, volunteers there to, to help with that. Those of you who are recent joiners or who had lost your name tags, the new ones are finally here. They actually showed up um, last Sunday afternoon. <laughs> anyway, um, so those are there in the, in, the, uh, in the name tag box there for you this morning. Um, at the back of the sanctuary this morning, as you head out, the coin folders for Lent are there. It's uh, quarter folders that, are, that invite you into a time of, of prayer and meditation, again, about the, the, about the cross and about the resurrection. But that also gives you an opportunity to, uh, uh, to give for um, Voyager's outdoor ministry, the camp that we help to support. Just another way to connect with them. So those, uh, those are available this morning. And then just so you know, 
In with and under the bread and wine of communion is the experience of the grace, the love, the body and blood of Jesus. You are all welcome to that experience this morning. You're all welcome at this table. You don't need to be Lutheran. You don't have to be a member here. Jesus is here for you, so you are welcome to come. We'll be serving communion at two stations. Um, there'll be gluten-free available if you need that. Either station will have that. If you need grape juice, um, those are in the inner ring of each of the wine trays. The grape juice is the light-colored liquid. Um, the ushers, in a few short moments, will invite you forward for, for that meal. But you are all invited for that. I invite you to rise together now as we come to the Lord in prayer, seeking grace, mercy, and the love of Almighty God. We offer our prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Generous God, we praise you as we return to you through the ministry and outreach of this congregation, a portion of all that you have entrusted to us. Bless each gift, whatever its size or nature, and multiply the good to be done through our talents and treasure. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy and steadfast God, we thank and praise you because you, you offer us avenues to connect to your word in Jesus. Help that word to fasten into our hearts, and then that from our hearts and hands we may proclaim to all people the wonder of your love. <laughs> Guide us in that word so that we may live by that word. Encourage us to join all those who lovingly display, display your heart of grace, proclaiming the power of your cross. Encourage our bishops, Tom and Elizabeth, and all other servants of the gospel to proclaim your care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and steadfast God, we thank and praise you because you give your spirit freely and also give bread that sustains every living thing. Graciously feed hungry souls and hungry stomachs with your bountiful provision. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and steadfast God, we thank and praise you because you stir up courage among your people to resist oppressive powers and to lead people into freedom. Shine the light of your justice through all who work to heal the wounds of injustice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and steadfast God, we thank and praise you because you hold tightly to those who grow weary in their struggle with addiction or temptation. By your strength, bear them up to live fully in your presence. When we struggle and are tested, redeem us by the endurance of Christ. Give us steadfast faith to strive for your glory until we witness it in its fullness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and steadfast God, we thank and praise you because you are ever and always with those who need your healing in any way. Remind us that in your strength, we can help fill the stomachs of the hungry. We can bind up the shattered. We can give rest to the weary and hope to the disillusioned. By your strength, restore the sick. Strengthen those facing surgery. Guide those in therapy. Encourage those in counseling. Sustain those in rehab. Build up those in recovery. Comfort those facing death. And give strength and hope to those who mourn including those that we name in our hearts before you that we know need any of that healing in their lives today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Whatever else you, O oh Lord, see that we need, whatever we forget, whatever we neglect, whatever we hide, whatever joys we have failed to live in gratitude, whatever, whatever peace and benefits that we 
neglect to attribute to your care. Help us to turn all of that over to you in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to hear and remember the words of our Lord Jesus, who gave us this holy supper, hear us, O God. In response to the call of God, and the command of Jesus Christ, and the bond of our common faith, we come to the table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In response to the love of our Creator, and remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus our Savior, we come to the table. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. In the grapes, we have a reminder of God's love and forgiveness for the youngest of our assembly. They are a gift that reminds us of the same grace, the same story alive in Jesus' gift to us. Following our Lord's command and responding to our need for forgiveness, we come. Please be seated. In a moment, the ushers will invite you forward for communion. If you can't come forward, first team finished will serve you as soon as we can.
Would you rise with me, please? The prayer and the blessing. Tender and merciful one, at your feast you fed us who brought nothing, turning our emptiness into joy. <laughs> Filled with your abundant grace, send us now to be ministers of reconciliation, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us to be fastened to one another, to be connected to Christ, that whatever fast we may embrace will cement us to Jesus Christ. Receive the benediction. Now God, who fills the creation with abundance, Christ, who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit, who draws us ever nearer to us, bless you now and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Thanks be to God.